We continue, continue to track extensive damage in the Philippines as Typhoon Mangut tears through the island country. There are now 12 people who are dead. Now this is some of the destruction left behind by the strong winds and heavy rains. Millions of people are without power and communication. Thousands are in temporary shelters as emergency responders work to bring them critical supplies. Now earlier we did hear from the director of CARE Philippines about what his team is doing on the ground. The CARE team and the team of our national and international partner organizations have been on the ground in the eye of Typhoon since two days ago. And I have been communicating with them on a regular basis. What they report is that uh, the impact of the typhoon is uh, fairly strong. In spite of that, uh, there is significant damage to the uh, rice crops and uh, corn crops, as well as many houses have been damaged. Uh, so significant damage to the infrastructure. So our teams report now that people in the evacuation centers need food and uh, water and, uh, and some clothing. But again, this is all preliminary information. Well, the storm has devastated homes in the Philippines. Floods, landslides, torrential rain and winds of over 200 kilometers per hour all serve to tear away siding and tin roofs or they also collapsed houses altogether. Now, earlier we did speak to a Calgary man who's concerned for his family who live in the direct path of the typhoon. Well, we're quite anxious right now, considering that they're in the direct hit path of the, uh, of the, uh, of the storm. And uh, we're trying to establish communication to, with them and we can't get hold of any of them, but it was encouraging to see that everybody seems to be prepared. However, it's, uh, we're still hoping that they would be okay after this one that passes through. We have cousins and uncles, aunts, um, grand, like, you know, distant relatives that's, that's in the direct path of this uh, Category 5 typhoon. Some of the houses in the Philippines, like being a third world country, they, they pretty much like made of wood, tin, um, not much just like what we have considered as standard here in North America. They basically use like traditional materials, wood, coconut, name it, what, what not. And they're located like approximately like two to three kilometers away from, from the ocean. And, um, and those oceans are quite violent because uh, even in a good normal day, the storm surges are quite high. And, uh, and we're just, uh, again, we're just very anxious and scared and we're, we're hoping really for the best.